This will give you a lot more control over Flux. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the amazing world of AI. Today, I want to show you something that is lit AF, as they say. So let's get started right away. So first things first, yes, this is about ConfUI because this function is part of a node that is called Model Sampling Flux. And this is pretty genius. I will show you examples in a second. But first, let me tell you a little bit on how that works. So this is, of course, in between the model. So you can set it before the LoRa, after the LoRa. It doesn't really make any difference. It influences how the model is rendering your image. So here, as you can see, you have a max shift and a base shift where you can set different values. And below that, you have a width and a height. Now, this width and height is not the resolution of the latent image. So this has nothing to do with the output. It has everything to do with with how the model is rendering your image. So kind of like changing the base image that it's using for that. I'm not 100% sure, but it can help you to fix problems in your image and have more control while having a consistent composition. Let's go to the examples. So let's start with the change that the resolution brings. Here you can see I have 512 by 512 and the values are always going to be squared. So I'm only going to say one of the numbers for the other examples and you can see what kind of details this gives you. Look for example at the skulls where some kind of stuff is coming out of the mouth. Well here we have the 768 resolution and you can see that the skulls have different details here and kind of like lay on her hair. Next, we have a resolution of 1024. And again, this changes the image and the image details. So you can see that this does indeed have a lot of impact. Here I'm using a resolution of 1600. And interestingly enough, this also changed the composition for us, but also introduced some additional interesting details. Now keep in mind, all of this is with the same seat, same settings, and also same prompt. And here we have 2048 resolution. This has a lot of interesting details in here. The setup, the crown that she's wearing completely changed. I love the roses. I love how the skulls are spread out and the other details of the clothing. So you can see that there is a lot of impact from just the resolution that the model is using. But on top of that, you can see right next to it, it says max and base. So in this case, I have a consistent value of 0 0.75 by 0 0.5. So let's compare this to the images where we change the max and the base values. Now here I have an image that has been rendered without the model sampling flux node. So this is what you get right from flux with the turbo model with eight steps. So now let's look at the different settings. Now, of course, here we have all these zeros. Ignore that, please. So this is 1.65 by 0 0.75. You can see it has changed a lot of the composition. And when we switch between the values that you can see on the top, you can see that we get indeed very different results while the composition basically stays the same. In this case, because there's a lot of different details to play around with, you can see that the changes are quite drastic, but it really also helps. And the experimentation is very nice when we have only these eight steps. By the way, for all of these images, I'm using a resolution of 1024 by 1024 in that model sampling flux node. And you can see that we get some pretty fantastic changes here in these kind of images. However, let me show another example where this might be a little bit more apparent. So here we have this fish swimming in the glass cup and the fish is not specifically nice, although the overall image is pretty nice. This is again without that node. And here we have examples where we apply different values. And you can see that this, for example, has these kind of corals now inside of the glass and also the fish is changing and you get different variations. For example, here 
I think that the fish is not too bad. It's not perfect, but it has improved. So you can certainly fix some details. For example, here, I think the fish is pretty good from the results. I also like the corals in the cup, but you could play around, for example, with a different seed also to get a different kind of results. So you can certainly see this also very nice. You can fix the image, get some better details. Also, here we have these kind of drips in the air floating around. So yeah, it kind of like adds different kind of things and can either improve the image or worsen the image. I also want to show you this example here, is, which is more like a comic or anime style with this little fox, which is looking for a treasure or stealing a treasure at night. And this image is not too bad. It's without the note. But when we apply these different changes to the values, again, all of that with a resolution of 1024 by 1024, you can see that it's slightly changes the image and can introduce some interesting fixes. For example, here, look at the tail. So in this case, the tail is coming out under the clothing, but in front of his skirt. Here it is fixed so that the tail is coming out from actually the back. So that's pretty interesting. But also with the face expression, for example, this value here, 0 0.95 by 0 0.5, it has a very nice, more sinister face expression. It adds to the story of him maybe stealing something. It also fixed this kind of like where the tail is coming from. So this certainly has a very, very interesting impact. And you can see that the composition over all the colors, everything stays the same and you just fix smaller details in your image. And I feel for that, this is extremely useful, especially with the eight step LoRa. This can really enable you to get a much better image out of Flux. Of course, I'm including for you a workflow that you can use. Here is a basic workflow that has here the classic setup where we load our models. We have here the Turbo LoRa. We have up here the model sampling flux node where you can change these settings. And then, of course, over here, we have the case sampler with the rendering. So all of that is pretty easy. And this is just a node that goes in between your model and the case sampler. So it's very easy to use. If you are one of my Patreon supporters, you also get the batch workflow that creates this kind of text that shows you the numbers automatically. And of course, this workflow also includes all of the prompts that I'm using for that video. Now here, also want to show you how I'm doing this. So of course, we are loading all of the models we have here, the LoRa also, and most of that is the same. Here we have the sampling flux, but I converted the max shift and the base shift into an input. And here I have a consistent input for the base shift, so 0 0.5. And I'm testing this against different values for the max shift. The way I'm doing that is over here, I'm using a float range. So we start at 0 0.75, we stop at 1.75, we step it up by 0 0.1. So basically 0 0.75, 0 0.85, 0 0.95 and so on. Now, of course, because both of these are floats, we are converting them into strings. And then we have this here, which is called string function. Again, I have converted here text A and text C as an input. In between, we have this divider line. And then again, I can put here some text in front of that max base shift so we know what the values are. And another thing I'm doing is that I'm extending the canvas to the top by 50 pixels and putting the text into all of that. You can see here, add text to image with the position, with the font and the size and everything. And, and as you've seen before, this is then resulting in an image like this. We Here we have another test batch so you can easily run through 10 different values and automatically have the value with every image, which makes it much easier to try out these settings. I also want to point out that there isn't really like an ideal setting you can use for that. But one thing I figured out is that when you have a higher resolution, for example, 2048 by 2048, you have a smaller range between max and base that you can use before things 
go astray. And another thing you can do is that you can also invert that. So for example, you can have a lower max value than the base value. That sounds a little bit strange, but experiment with that. You can get some really interesting results from that. Personally, I found for myself that the value of 1024 by 1024 works best and gives you a nice big range on how to play with these values to get better results. So personally, I really like what this node is doing. Thanks for joining me on this amazing trip through the AI world. Leave a like if you enjoyed that video. Subscribe if you want to see more like that. And thank you for watching. Bye.